Hello, and welcome to The Knit Girls. This is episode 568. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. It's Saturday the 26th of March, 2022. Um, Laura and I both use the she, her pronouns, and uh, this is the last episode before Laura turns 41. That is true. She has a birthday next Wednesday. It's knit night, right? Yeah, it is. It so, is. I totally did not get that, but yeah, it's will be fun. Um. So yeah, I have a present. That really? I, I um had set aside a while ago. So. Ooh, now I'm intrigued. So now uh, other knit night people have to bring presents. Well, they would have. To <laughs> well, Holly won't be there. No, she's out of town. Eloise and Carol maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, the weather's been swinging crazily. It has been. Here. And, and causing lots of havoc with sinuses. And migraines. Yes. Um, and right now, this morning it was chilly and now it's hot, so. Yep. Whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a knitting show typically. Typically. Um, do you, would you like to Today go? it's like a ripping out show for me. Mm. Um, if you don't mind going first. That's fine. I don't have a ton to show. Um, so the first thing that I'm working on right now is something that hasn't been shown since November. And it's just because I put it down and started working on something else and basically forgot about it. Um, it is Camino Bubbles by Kieran Foley. And the yarn is Leading Men Fiber Arts. Uh, Max. King Max. I don't remember the base. It's the one that's got like 600 yards in it. I want to say Showcase or Showstopper. One of those. I don't remember. Um, so, once I pulled this out and I was at Laura's last night and we were watching Drag Race, I realized that I messed up something. So when you start this it's it's um the bubbles are created with drop stitches and of course it, it's considered lace and it's not blocked yet so it looks kind of frumpy but once it's blocked it'll be really pretty but when you start the first row um there's like 11 of these stitches um you do 11 rows before you drop but then you're supposed to move to the main chart and then it's 17 never move to the main chart oh. So, <laughs> mine is Camino Bubbles, sort of. <laughs> um, I didn't even realize that until I pulled, I pulled this back out, and I was looking at the chart last night. When yeah. I pulled it back out, and I was like, oh, that's why it doesn't look right. Because I can go to like the previous, you know, dropped bubble and count the rows because it's the number of stitches, um, or the number of bars. Yeah. So, and I was like, that only says 11, but the chart says it should be 17. Oh, that's because I never moved on, so. It but is it what it is. Good. It looks good the way you have it. Um, it's fun. It's a design feature. Look, you designed your own Camino bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> this is the halfway really point. Pretty. Um, so I've got two skeins, and this is the point where I joined the skeins. So I've still got quite a bit left of number two. And I had already, I think I had swatched with it once or twice so I, I have a little bit extra in this scheme than I did from the first. Oh, so. gotcha. So I'll knit to the halfway point or I'll knit until it's the same length again from the halfway point and then uh, finish it off with the ribbing which is how it starts. So yeah, Camino Bubbles. This is King Max colorway of Leading Men Fiber Arts. Uh, that's the first thing and then the second thing is the sweater I've been working on for about a month. At least it feels like it's been about a month. I don't um, know, has it? And it is windswept by... It's been this month, like March. Yeah, by Tin Can Knits. And Tin Can Knits is a collective. It's two different people. Um, Emily and... The other person's name. Who Alexa? Yes, that's correct. And... Um, this is from the Handmade in the UK collection that came out in 2013. And they are great in that their patterns 
are generally pretty unisex and are usually written from birth up to around uh, 4x. Um, so like this one, the chest, the largest chest size is a 56 inch and it's intended to be worn with two inches of negative E, so 58. 50, yeah. Um, well, one to three inches of negative E, so yeah. Yeah. 58 to 60-ish. Um, and this was back in 2013, before like the a conversations. Lot of conversations had started right. about size inclusivity. So I'm knitting this with some yarn that I got in part of the uh, Isolde Teague Sweater Club. And it is Sedum, S E D U M. Um, I don't think it's made anymore. Uh, it's really pretty though. It's very shiny. So it's a 40% wool, 30% silk, and 30% linen. And that's mostly the silk is what gives it the shine. Yeah. Um, linen will to some degree, and linen and silk together is a really strong combination. Um, so this is a lace weight that I'm holding doubled. I'm just pulling from the center and the outside and of the ball. And they all take dye differently, which is why you mm -hmm. kind of get that frosted look, because linen is a plant-based fiber and doesn't use the same acid dyes that wool or silk use. Yeah. Uh, so this is the sweater. I haven't, uh, you know, the sleeves are on holder, so I haven't done sleeves yet. And it's pretty close to where it was last week when you saw it. I put a little stitch marker so yeah, well you got oh, like half an inch yeah well i had done a little bit before i did the stitch marker that's my um 12 inch mark and i need to go four inches past that so okay um yeah i just haven't been motivated to work on this a ton this week but it's okay it's still i still really love it and it's very soft and happy to work with i just uh well, if you decide you don't like that one, I will <laughs> gladly take it off your hands. Just haven't been in the headspace for it, I yeah. think, is where I'm going. Oh, I meant to say, I don't think I said this on the podcast, but I did mention it in our Patreon thing. Um, so I finished the Loop Yin Yang sweater uh, a few weeks ago, and it didn't fit. And I hadn't decided what I was going to do with it yet, whether I was going to rip it out or leave it in time out for a little while or what. Because I really enjoyed working with the yarn, but it just didn't fit. So, um, positive outcome. Uh, <laughs> Steph from Loop, who is the dyer behind, you know, Loop, contacted me and said she'd love to use it as a booth sample. So, that way I don't have to rip it out. And she'll send me a sweater slot in exchange. You know, basically, I get back the same amount that I sent her. Yeah. So, um... I get to knit with it again, which is awesome. Yeah, the same yarn, different color. Same yarn, right? different color. Yeah, I chose a different color just because I had now I had knit with the red and I wanted to do something different. So, um, so you had heart and soul before. What's the new color combination? I had body and soul before. Okay. And this one, this time, I'm only getting one color because I only wanted to deal. It's really hard for me to pick a project like a sweater because so much time goes into it, and adding the complexity of a set second color made it harder for me to choose yeah um especially considering that these aren't really contrasting colors they sort of um meld really well because of the way that they're applied so that added another layer of complexity mm -hmm. so i just chose a single color which is c s e e it's part of weight and c ah. and it's a sort of a green with a little bit of a blue um oh, cool a little bit of a blue, blue tint to it so yep that's what i've been working on that's it your Those turn two? so i have not touched my out of winter shawl by tammy gore i'm going to wind the contrast yarn that i spun for it today because i have been really focused on two things you okay yeah i just yanked my hair into like a, a, there was a little knot there and it caught <laughs> okay <Sorry>. drama <laughs> drama um so i primarily knit on what i'm knitting on right now which is a test knit for tiff nealon um it is being knit using um some stranded dye works and some hand spun so i got through the whole first section oop i'm going the wrong way so and i actually did an extra repeat because i had 
grab my bag. Oh, it's in my bag bag, my project bag. I had this much left of the first hand spun. So I had enough left to do one more repeat and then a little bit left over. And um, I had this much left of the first skein of the Stranded Dye Works mohair in blue rinse. And um, you actually use two strands of the mohair held together without the hand spun for a couple rows. And then I started with my next hand spun because it uses two different colors. And this is um, Into the World's Gray Shetland in the Merlin colorway. And this was um, Hello Yarn in Cordale. So I started the decrease section. The other section increases with that cool eyelet texture. And then this section is all um, decreases every row so it'll go much faster. And uh, you also change the needle size. So yeah, it's zipping along. I have around 85 rows to go. And then I will be done with it, which is good because it um, is due by the beginning of April, I think. So yeah, I'm super in love with it. It's going to be super big and cozy and a nice shawl, nice asymmetrical triangle and very, very purpley me. <laughs> so with purples and grays, I mean, what? It's like you chose the colors. <laughs> it's like I spun and chose the colors. So that is hanging out in my... Uh, I feel like you're going to stab me in the eye with those needles. Fat Squirrel Speaks Bag in um, the library cards, which is one of my favorites. And then the other thing I've been working on is also in a Fat Squirrel bag. It is a pair of socks from... Um, Knit Spin Farm. Knit Spin Farm in a colorway that Leslie actually just finished, which is... Uh, inspire your heart with art and I'm knitting it on size one needles and I got a little bit I got the yellow and the peachy done today as I w waited in line at the farmers market and then to get a lemonade at Wendy's on my way here <laughs> so I got a little bit of progress made I'd love to finish these this month and these are for my sister for Christmas this coming year and I'll get them put away and that'll be one Christmas project done. So the sweater didn't get any love because I really have been focused on um, working on the shawl, the test knit, and getting it done so then I can have undivided attention for that hand spun sweater, the recalibrate. The one that you want to have done by the time you go to ply away. Yep. Which is? On the 17th? Less than a month. Yep. Out of fingering weight. It'll be fine. <laughs> Just keep saying it. Um, so that is it for me. I've no finished objects, but you finished some things. I did. I finished some socks for me. Um, the last few pairs have been for other people. So um, I wanted to make a pair for me. I'm just dropping everything today. Today is today. Um... So it's I, not Rex Manning Day It yet. is not. I I'm so excited for Rex Manning Day. A pair of socks out of, oh, this is the wrong tag, out of Wooly Mammoth, which is such a pretty color um, by Knit Spin Farm. This was not a club colorway, um, and we just found out that this base is going to be no longer, um, like, it's a, been a, a, discontinued yeah. by the mill. Not the, yeah, the mill, the people that make it, which is a real bummer because I love this base. Bonus. I have a lot of it, so... <laughs> um, a couple of years worth of club. Yeah. So I knit a pair of socks. Um, these are, again, when I do sport weight socks, I tend to do the same pattern every time, and it's not any specific pattern. It's just 56 stitches around with a heel flap and a round heel, and um, that's it. But, I mean, it's it's not a... Not a very difficult um, You let song. the yarn do the talking. Yeah. I like the the yarn. I like the colors. I like the density of the sock at the gauge that I use. So, 
So now I've got a pair of socks. And I do kind of the opposite. I do 56 stitches, but I do toe up with Wendy Johnson's toe up gusset pattern. And your density is different than mine as yep. well. Um, I like a snug sock, so. I like to wiggle my toes. <laughs> Uh, I know that's surprising to everyone. <laughs> yep, that's it. Um, the rest of the show is yours, my friend. Okay, well, I have nothing finished. Like I said, I do have some spinning that I did finish. Um, I applied eight ounces this week. And I will show you that. So the first thing that I finished, and then I have some other stuff, to, like still on the bobbins. So the first thing that I finished is some Ingle Nook. And it is a very squishy, tweety base. This was their cherry pie, one of their pie blends. They still have the pie blends in the shop as of right now. And it was four ounces of a 40% merino, 25% Manx, 25% tweed, and 10% mulberry silk blend. I got 175 yards, so it is a bulky um, two-ply. And it really puffed up after I washed it as well. Um, spun on my Lendrum with the Waywinder and plied on the Hanson. It's got such a fun tweedy look to it and I think it'll be a great hat. So it's a little bit more inconsistent than a lot of my spins because that tweed and the different fiber types sometimes are a little bit harder to draft together. But I'm really happy with it. Good. It's squishy. Oh well, yeah. For some reason so. it makes me think of horse bun, even though I know it's not. Yeah. I think it's just because for you, you don't spin a lot of heavier. I don't spin a lot of bulky. Yeah. So that one is loads of fun. And then I also spun some color bridges by Philly Spun. So when Philly Spun dies, she puts little extra bits of fiber between um, the dyed areas in the pan, and then she sells them um, in four ounce increments. So it's a lot of different fiber types, mostly superwash though. And, um, just really, really fun. So this is 250 yards of a two ply. It's a little less than four ounces. I had a couple left over on one bobbin that I think I'm actually going to chain ply so I can do like baby mitts out of them. Um, she actually just put up a color bridges update yesterday. So there might be some in the shop. And I love Burke's stuff. She's got great stuff. This is going to be 100% uh, baby knits. It's very sherberty for you. Yes. Oh, yeah. But the fun thing about the color bridges is you never know what you're going to get. So um, it's kind of a grab bag. And I always find a purpose for things, even if it's giving it away to someone else. There's always a purpose. But this will be great, I think, especially with the superwash content. So... Yeah, and our friend uh, Deep Blue Renegade just had a baby, so perhaps, I think his name is Daniel, we'll get something out of that. And then the last thing I have, I actually spun each bobbin a little bit differently. So these were fiber dumplings, same kind of concept um, in that it's like a grab bag of different colors. These were from Kim Dye's Yarn in her update that she did for like Black Friday, I believe. They are a cashmere merino silk base with sparkle. And the one right here, I just, um, I marled them. So I held two separate ones together and did really marly. So you can see the marls on the singles. And the other one, I just spun end to end. And I wanted to see how they'll fly together. So it'll come out a nice drapey soft with that merino cashmere silk sparkle blend um i can't wait to see that's next to apply and then that's all i have to like apply right now besides the sweater spin now that's not to say she doesn't have anything on on no. wheels they're just not at a point where they're ready to apply that is correct or like the first bobbins on the wheels versus being able to show it to you because mm -hmm. when i finish the first bobbin then i can show it to you guys because it's off the wheel but when it's still in progress, it makes it really hard to bring a wheel over to Leslie's. I could take it off, but that's... Then you'd have to bring it upstairs. Yeah. And through the little... <laughs> Baby <door>. gates. <laughs> so, yeah. That is what I have on the wheels, 
on the needles, finished. I've spun over a pound and a half this month, which is awesome. You definitely met your goal. Yeah, I've knit, um, or at least started like a pound of hand spun and fiber too. So that's pretty cool too. You love your metrics, friend. <laughs> I do. It's like my company. Everything's about the numbers. I think that's unfortunately a huge part of teaching right now. But for me, it just makes my brain happy. Like, hey, I did this. Sometimes, um, for me, saying, hey, I accomplished this versus I have this still to do um, works out better. Yeah. Oh, I'm not good at keeping track of, excuse me, of uh, what I've done or what is to do. Um, without show notes, I would never <laughs> be able to recall when I knit something or what I knit out of something. Or... I, I saw you search the show notes to see when you last picked that up. Yep. Um, so that's handy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see, what else? Um, so I'm re-listening to Tales of Arania. That is a male-male fantasy kind of comedy to some degree. Um, I'm on the third in the series, which is The Consumption of Magic. Is that the point where you stopped reading the series? I think so. After they locate, they go, and there's a dragon. A sand dragon? Yeah, I think so. Well, the first dragon is Kevin. That's the one that... That's in the first book, yeah. right? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, I remember Kevin... <laughs> I don't know that I read the second one. No, I definitely read the second one. Mm -hmm. I did I not get to the I think you stopped third. reading the third... I don't know if you'd started, but I told you that a major character Yeah, and died. then I was, like, done. Yeah. Spoiler. Um, I didn't tell you which one. I just said I know. a character. Um, but anyway, so I'm on the third one now... Um, and that's the consumption of magic. And what am I reading? Um, so I finished the Broken Room by Peter Klein's. That one's a horror, kind of a horror slash thriller. And it was okay. I mean, it was interesting in that. So I, I mentioned before that it it involves ghosts to some degree. There's a. Um, a child who's been experimented on and because of this she can hear um, what she thinks is people in another dimension and it's interesting because it references back to a character in my favorite Peter Klein's book which is 14 and that character dies in that book and as a ghost in this other dimension she can hear him. Oh interesting. Um, it's sort of an Easter egg. It never comes out and says that. I, I do love those types of yeah. Easter eggs. Like, those are really cool when, like, side characters from other books mm -hmm. just pop up a little bit. It makes... Uh, Reese Ford does that really, really well. Oh, okay. Like, in Sinner's Gin, um, like, uh, they go to get tattooed at the, the tattoo 4 shop. 15, yeah, 415. And in 415, um... They walk past uh, one of the main characters who's busing outside of a uh, Irish pub. Mm -hmm. So, like, with a cowboy hat on, and you're like, "Oh, I know that character." Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I like that. That's what I'm. Or I finished that one, and I'm still reading Winter Set Hollow, which is like the murderous Pooh Bear kind of. Oh yeah. Book. What about you? I have been watching a lot of murder mysteries, Father Brown, Death in Paradise, and lots of hockey, because the Pens have been playing a lot this week. Um, and at school, I'm reading Too Bright to See by Kyle Luckoff. It's a middle grade ghost story um, that I'm enjoying. It won the Stonewall Award this year, as well as a bunch of other awards. So it's good. I just have to find time to actually sit and read. But I did that do that a little bit this week at work. Um, I gave end of year testing has already started mm -hmm. so I did that twice this week and so that my afternoons were um, originally scheduled to be a little bit more free I ended up watching um, one of my co-workers classes a bit his father um, had a severe medical issue and so he had to there was an emergency 
um, so I ended up watching them in the afternoon, but I still managed to squeeze in a little reading time. Got a lot of books weeded, um, just when you pull old damaged books or books that are no longer being checked out and haven't been checked out for a long time. To make room um, for new. To make room, yep, for new stuff. And, yeah. I got to do that because I finally have enough books in the library to do that, to get rid of some of the older stuff. Yeah. So that is always awesome. Um, we have something to review, which is cool. Pom Pom very nicely sent us uh, their new issue, which is Dreamscape. It is the spring 2022. It's issue 40. 40. Yeah, Congratulations, Pom Pom. I know. That's awesome. It has um, a very... Dreamy? Yeah. Like, the colors, the mood board they chose are very pastel-y. Um, I love the spine has, like, that gradient from pink to purple. So it's a very pastel uh, mood board, and it uses a lot of mohair. Mm -hmm. So to create some of those dreamy effects some light ruffles and things like that, it uses some mohair. So Wandering Flock is actually someone we've bought yarn mm -hmm. from before and really enjoyed. And her yarn is in, is used in this Effervescence by Amy Shear, which this is my favorite sweater of the magazine. You can actually, um, the ruffle, that mohair ruffle is added at the end. So it would be really easy to do without. And it just makes me very, very happy. That lace yoke. Yeah. And yeah, Wandering yeah. Flock, usually, I think she only does, like, singles. So um, I'd love to see that also in applied yarn. But, yeah, it's inspired by, like, boba tea and um, or bubble tea. And, uh, yeah, it's really, really pretty. So... There's the mo the majority of this book, words are hard today, <laughs> the majority of this book is um, sweaters with two pairs of socks. Yeah. This issue, I should say. I also really like the Reverie socks. Yeah, and that could very easily be a, a, a with a different color combo, have a very different mood, a very different mm -hmm. feel to it. Yeah, absolutely. So it would be um, super fun. Just that little smidge of color work to get your feet wet and some color work. Did you want to talk about... Mm. Okay. I, this is a mohair lace sweater that's really pretty. I'd love to see it in a non-mohair option. Yeah, I like the stitch definition. I actually like the peplum that we passed already. Did we pass? Yeah. Oh, that one? Yeah. Yep. I like that peplum on that model. I don't know how it would look. I'd have to go on to Ravelry or another site that shows it in different sizes. Instagram has some great images. Um, Pom Pom does do a lot with Instagram. I also wanted to mention their sizing is fairly good. They go up usually to 58 to 60 yeah. in most of their sweaters. And one thing that I appreciate is they also tell you the model's heights and their bust circumference and what size they're showing on so you can kind of get an idea of the ease that's being used. Um, so this is another. I really like this sweater. Again, I like the lifestyle that it's selling me. That it's, you know, it's a single ply mohair silk. Well, I don't know single ply. It's a mohair silk um, yarn in most of it except for the cuffs and the collar um, and that's in sort of your traditional sock weight and it's very airy because of the mohair mm -hmm. and it's very floaty yep um, and that mohair typically is around like 460 yards per 50 grams mm -hmm. like what i'm using from amy florence so it makes it a nice light mm -hmm. fiber and mohair because it has like the loose bits to it um kind of like the halo yeah. of it fills the empty spaces so it's really light but also really warm yeah and it's, this one also has that cute little collar yeah. that like peter pan almost collar yeah it's really beautiful and the, the, the i don't want to say lifestyle but like the images are very compelling in that sweater 
And then there's this one, which I believe is brioche. And it's a created gradient through marling, mm -hmm. which is really pretty. I'm not a super fan of the cable and the bobbles on the sleeves. Let me see if there's another. Yeah. But you could easily switch out a cable. Yeah. Or just keep it in brioche. Yeah. A big fan of brioche, so. But I like that short, almost Chanel type jacket mm -hmm. feel. There's a couple of pairs, another pair of socks. I also really like this one, and this one, um, you can do that ruffle or you cannot do the ruffle. The pattern has both. Yeah. So it, it would be like maybe a good first sweater. It's pretty simple. Lots of stock in it. As I get older, lots of stock in it is how I roll, if y'all haven't noticed. I like to have at least one project going that's yeah. mostly, if not all, stock in it or barter. inspired by, like, pick and mix. So... That was never a big thing where I grew up here. Like, pick and mix was never a big thing. I know what it is because I've seen it in stores, but it was never yeah. a part of my childhood or anything. I love this. Um, so it's made out of the same yarn I used for my poet, which is... Biche and Bouche, uh, which is a French um, wool yarn. It's very light. And then it also has the mohair added. Mm -hmm. So two very, very light um, fibers. And just the color scheme on this. This would be one where I would definitely be like, yes, I need that yarn mm -hmm. and that color. Yeah. That's really beautiful. Um, that's when I'd also want to look up and just see what it looks like on other sizes. The models in here are diverse in size and it, it appears in ethnicity. Um, but sometimes I want to be able to see things from angles that aren't presented in the, yeah. in the magazine. There's a couple other sweaters that we weren't in love with. There's some honeysuckle cream puffs. There's some crafts in here, uh, like a chandelier style, um, crafts. There's um, just some really nice stuff. So if this inspires you, I would definitely check out Pom Pom Dreamscape. And thank you, Pom Pom, for thinking of us and sending it to us. Yeah, it's pretty. There's a couple things that I'm like, yes, I really like those socks and I really like that first sweater. So that might go in the wish list for sure. But yeah, it is pretty. And I always like hydrangeas that vibe such a good spring vibe i'm so glad spring's here yeah i just wish the weather would <laughs> realize that and stay in the same 20 to 30 degree range all the time at a time of day yeah that'd be nice but Oop, i apparently did not i'm gonna pull that through sometimes i knit all the stitches with both strands and sometimes i do not yep there's been several times on my sweater that I'm working on that I'll only pick up one strand in a stitch and I won't realize it until <laughs> 10 rows That's later very far down, that so I have to drop down and I will probably just kind of weave that in yeah. a little bit. It'll be all right. It will be fine. Or I'll pull it. Oh, there we go. I can pull it through a little bit. Make it less obvious or just make it more obvious. <laughs> I'm knitting stitches the wrong way. All right. Well, that's oh, a no. signal that we, <laughs> we probably should wrap it up. Yep. Um, so, yeah, Laura turns 41. I do. We uh, started the SSK Knit Alongs. Mm -hmm. So all our vendors are listed there. I'm going to do a new blog entry for updated vendors mm -hmm. this week. Um and we'll also have openings for new vendors, which yep. is exciting. So we'll be getting that form out soon for SSK. But yeah, I think that's it. I Was there so anything too. else? I don't know. It's very warm. You can see <laughs> in my cheeks that it's very warm. So my brain isn't quite working the way that it should. So we hope you guys have an awesome weekend and week. And uh, we'll talk to you again next Time week. Time to flip that heat for air. Yep. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.